Professor Milford Walpop is the chief protagonist of the first of these models known as the multi-regional model. My theory about modern human origins is much like what you're seeing here. Modern humans originate as features, modern features appearing in different populations at different times. And their imports spreading around the world like these waves. Brain size in one place, smaller brow ridges elsewhere, a smaller chin, more complex behavior. Modern human origins is like the interaction of these waves, according to my theory of multi-regional evolution. But according to the Eve theory, there's one great sweep of humans out of Africa and a violent replacement of everybody alive in the world by this one group of Africans, as you see here. The originator of this second model, known as the Out of Africa, or Eve model, is Dr. Chris Stringer of London's Natural History Museum. I was led to believe that modern humans originated in Africa because, at least starting in Europe, where I began my research, there was a clear separation between Neanderthals and early modern humans. And I found it difficult to believe that given the time we, we knew then lay between Neanderthals and modern humans, that the Neanderthals could have evolved into the modern humans. But when I looked at evidence from elsewhere, from the Middle East, there seemed to be early modern humans at an earlier date. And in Africa, at an even earlier date, we seem to have specimens like this one from Jebel Ihud in Morocco. And this specimen seemed to me to be an ideal missing link, if you like, a transitional form between primitive and modern humans. It had a combination of features which was not found in the Neanderthals. And it was easier to go from something like Jebel Ihud to an early modern than to go from a Neanderthal to an early modern. Now, in this case, where we're comparing two models, we have an unusual situation in the history of science, a situation where one of the models has to be wrong. And there are so many overlapping predictions that we can determine which one it is. The Out of Africa model rests on the pretense that there was a complete replacement of all the people around the world by a group of Africans, perhaps killer Africans, who replaced them, moved into their areas, and took over their lifeways and eventually evolved into the modern populations of those areas. If we can show one place outside of Africa where that can't have happened, we have disproved the model, because if it falls once, it falls everywhere. For Professor Walpoff, only the Indonesian Homo erectus can be the true ancestor of the first modern Aborigine populations. This is a late Pleistocene Australian that combines a series of features that are unique in their combination to these Australians, including a flattened cranial rear, a very long flat frontal bone, separated from the prominent superorbitals by virtually no grooving at all. You can see the cheekbones, which are quite large, and you can see the extraordinary ridge that goes along their slope, and the great prominence of the lower face, the prognathism. This specimen has an ancestry. We know this. According to the Eve theory, here's the ancestry. The Eve theorists have said that the border cave specimen, which they believe is dated to 100,000 years, is the ancestor of all living humans around the world. For instance, Chris Finger, in a recent paper on this issue, proclaims that Border Cave is an example of what he means by the Eve population that's ancestral to everybody else. This Eve, of course, has weak brow ridges, a high rounded forehead, as far as we can tell, a very different back of the skull insofar as it's present, and would have to be a unique ancestor of the late Pleistocene Australian. Another possibility, if you will, is there some Kafsa. If the dating of Kafsa is correct, Kafsa 9 could be a potential ancestor with its high rounded forehead, a rounded cranial rear, and a fairly delicate cheekbone, although it shares the prognathism of the specimen from uh, Australia. It has none of the brow ridge development. So these would be the Eves that would be the unique ancestors according to the Eve theory. But the one specimen that cannot be an ancestor, can have no genetic contribution to the late Pleistocene Australians, is the Indonesian Homo erectus, which has the same cranial flattening, the same forehead flattening, the same thickened superorbitals with the lack of a groove separating them, the same prominent cheekbones with ridge following along its angle, the same marked prognathism. This specimen would have to be replaced by these eaves, who would then have to come to take on its unique characteristics, if the eave theory is correct. This is a very torturous example, a very torturous theory. There's a much simpler explanation, and that, of course, is that the Eve theory is wrong.